After COVID pandemic, uh, IT industry has grown tremendously, and many electrical, mechanical, civil engineers has turned into IT professionals. Then, what will be the future of production and service sectors in India, sir? Akshita, even without COVID, that's one of the problems of the past 20-25 years. What's happening is twofold. For a variety of the English language, a section of youngsters who can fulfill the service needs of the rest of the world, a few entrepreneurs, spread of technology, digital communications, gave us an opportunity. And the time difference between, let's say, United States and India, etc. Gave us an opportunity in IT-enabled services. Good. We must harness every single opportunity. Simultaneously, two things happened. On the one hand, we did not promote building of infrastructure and production of goods of quality to match global standards for a variety of reasons. On the other hand, engineering colleges produced a very small number of useful people. Because IT became successful for some time and glamorous, they could have their pick. And even a mechanical engineer went to IT because they eliminated jobs, not to 25, 30,000 salaries were here, it's unproductive. So everybody flocked there. So now we have a twin problem. There is not adequate creation of employment in the other sectors because you are not doing enough as an economy. And even if you do it, you are not able to get quality people to be able to do the productive work. People like, for instance, Nayak of LNT, he always laments. Real engineering is dead in India. And the IT industry, because of the glamour coefficient in a country where there is paucity of talent despite large numbers, they are picking the best. So the answer is, again, on the one hand, creating employment and some effort is being made. From this side, there is no need to have only 10% good engineers. Supposing you have at least 50-60% are reasonably good, then there is no shortage of these engineers for other segments of economy, even if they are little less glamorous. Even glamour will change. Ultimately, what is glamour? Wherever there is money, there is glamour. When we were students, medical students, dermatology was nobody's serious thought of it as a specialty. Radiology, only the idiots will go. Today, radiology, dermatology, why more money? So, glamour is a function of money. Rarely is glamour a function of, you know, the quality of innovation, the creativity of the mind, the problem solving, and that, that, that's always there to some extent. But in modern world, money brings glamour. So if there is a greater demand for that kind of a skill, automatically glamour will grow. Let's not worry about it. So if we increase from this 10-15% to let's say 25-30, initially later 40-50, from 10-15 becoming 100 doesn't happen overnight. You have to work for the next 20 years because we messed up too much. Institutions don't change dramatically like in a film. But step that. Then automatically there is no shortage of human resources. Many, many employers, you know, the biggest complaint I hear is, sir, if I invest, where are the workers of quality? So do this part. Other parts have to happen. And that's why, despite all the deficiencies, on occasion I support the government's efforts. Because there is some earnest attempt to improve the economy. They are messing up many other things. But at least some effort, infrastructure, some investment, some conscious effort, production linked incentive, this, that, not enough. But at least there is some conscious effort and a lot more is required. So don't lose heart, we can change it.